Hello. Um, I am going to be reading some emails that I received 40 minutes after I reported sexual assault, rape, and harassment to police uh, this year on February 1st, 2020. Madison, we've seen the recent posts and communications on your LinkedIn profile. The information included in those posts is of great concern to us, and as such, I wanted to reach out to you without delay. Please know that we take this matter very seriously. Agency has always been a company that cherishes values, and the expectation that we respect each other is fundamental. What you recently shared on your LinkedIn page is very concerning, and in direct conflict with the culture we've always worked hard to build here. In order to assist and get a better understanding of the details, we have brought in a female lawyer who specializes in these situations. She will be in touch with you shortly to assist in determining next steps. Respectfully, President's full name, President's titles, agency website, agency location, and promotional material for their nonprofit. I received that at 5.30 p.m. and I got home at 4.45 from the police station in London, Ontario. So that was wonderful to receive at first. Um, just some quick background. I quit this agency in 2015. Um, they were fully aware that I was seeking treatment and in need of medical support at that time. Um, I started intensive treatment and therapy in August of that year. Um, and then this year, and at the end of last year, I recalled events, experience that have led to a PTSD diagnosis from 2015 to present. So it's just how I'm surviving. Um, published a LinkedIn article on the 20th of January, an open letter, and reported to Detective on Saturday, February 1st. So I wanted to break down the email a little bit and just go over a couple points, um, three to be specific. I wanted to talk about, please know that we take this matter very seriously, which is the sentence on the, after the first paragraph. Um, this matter was never taken very seriously or seriously at all until I reported it to police. Um, number two. What you recently shared a conflict with the culture we've always worked hard to build here. The agency yearbook in which I designed and photographed, as you can imagine, contains staff photos, agency teams, clubs, employees of the month, events, celebration photos, client photos, logos, and a message from the president. Uh, the photographs in that yearbook, as well as the photos that can be found publicly online, are representative of the culture that I experienced there and that the culture I reported to police. Through hashtags and Google searches, such as hashtag agency perks, or hashtag agency TO, or hashtag ZOM agency, or hashtag agency NY, or hashtag agency Olympics, and more lots more. This is how I was able to find pictures of myself that I'd never consented to having online. I also found a video on YouTube on the president of the agency's public YouTube account that was posted seven years ago and it has my backside in it. And from the video you can tell they slowed down when they saw my backside and Unfortunately, I had to publicly demand that the video was taken down and I was able to provide police with that video as evidence as well. Because you can download content 
from any YouTube video. You can download that video. So anyone could have downloaded that in seven years and you didn't tell me either. So that's evidence of the culture that I experienced. Three, we have brought in a female lawyer who specializes in these situations. She will be in touch with you shortly to assist in determining next steps. Um, I guess you don't need to understand the details as you're not involved in the investigation. Um, saying we brought in a female lawyer who specializes in these kinds of situations. Um, these types of situations are called workplace sexual assault and harassment and rape and bullying. Um, we can call them what they are, even if they're allegations. They're not situations. They're much more than that, uh, which makes me wonder why you would need a female lawyer who specializes in these situations. Almost half an hour later, I received her lawyer's email. The name of the email was the agency's name. And then I had the lawyer's full name and email. And she says, Dear Miss Turner, further to President's email from earlier this afternoon, please find attached my letter of today's date. I look forward to hearing from you. And it involved a lot of her legal jargon and some disclaimer, as well as a PDF attachment. Um, PDF attachment was two pages. And it says, February 1st, 2020, delivered by email, Madison Turner. Dear Ms. Turner, regarding agency, further to the email you received from President, we have been retained by agency to assist in this matter. Agency has reviewed your recent post on your LinkedIn profile. which chronicles certain events which appear to have taken place during the course of your employment with agency. Agency takes these concerns very seriously and would like to get a better understanding of the details of the events in question in order to determine next steps. I would like to discuss the allegations set out in your posts with you as soon as possible and invite you to contact me at your earliest convenience. I am currently available during the following times. February 3rd, 12 o'clock to 4 p.m. February 4th, 9 a.m. to noon. February 5th, 9 a.m. to 3. February 6th, 9 a.m. to 3. In order to ensure that we do not miss one another, it may be advisable to send me an email in advance to set up a time to speak. Alternatively, if you have retained legal counsel, I would suggest that you and your lawyer contact me directly. I look forward to hearing from you or your legal counsel. Yours very truly, lawyer's signature, lawyer's name, and lawyer's initials twice. So, that was fun. Um, really excited to read all of that after reporting for four hours, especially the contradictions in both emails were very interesting. There's a lot of, this would never happen here, but we need the details um, of your allegations. Pretty intimidating in my opinion. It felt intimidating. It felt psychologically triggering um, seeing that president's picture on Gmail in her email address and everything sent to an email that is supposed to be privated. I never want to, to be contacted at all. Like this is, I just wanted to move on and the fact that this is still happening and that they're doing this and that I have to ask a detective to help me is is not okay and agencies shouldn't be doing this. It should have been handled seven years ago when it happened. 
but it didn't, so we're moving on. On Sunday, February 2nd, at 7 a.m., I worked up the courage to email my detective. Hi, detective. I am forwarding you emails I have just received from agency, president and their legal team. Can you call me when you are available and have any time for advice? I am going to forward the other email as well. Thank you. Madison. So, he responded an hour later, because he's amazing, and he said, Hey Madison, I'm just tied up with another call right now. I've read the email. I wouldn't be too concerned. I unfortunately cannot give you legal advice as to what you should do. No problem. Obviously, not a lawyer. What I can do is try to articulate the pros and cons to posting the investigation, the process, or the updates of an investigation. I believe a pro is actually letting people know the process and that they are supported. In a very broad sense, I think posts and communications on LinkedIn are likely to make others feel empowered to report. This is somewhat double-edged, however. Releasing a version, parts of a, or a portion of your experience can impact the investigation in few ways. Sometimes this is a real investigative benefit to releasing as little information as possible. That being said, I understand from speaking to you that part of this journey for you is shining a light on the process and taking a stand in a much broader sense. As far as responding to the company or lawyer, you make that decision, but I do not see anything wrong with not responding or simply saying that there is an active police investigation and they should reach out to him or to him, <laughs> to the detective or Toronto police. Hope that helps. Um, detective's full name, his title, badge number, what section he's in, phone number, and email. I thanked him immediately. Um, and then two days later, on a separate email account, I received two more emails. And it said, forward, a matter of serious concern. Um, it was forwarded to my junk mail because never had an email correspondence with her. <laughs> so on Tuesday, uh, February 4th at noon, the president of the agency emailed me and said, Hi Madison, please see correspondence below. We are trying to make contact with you. Please alert us if there is a better email address to reach you. And she forwarded me her previous email to my alternative and private email address. Um, about 39 minutes later, I get a forward from the her lawyer and it says, Dear Miss Turner, please find attached my email sent to you on February 1st, 2020. If there is an alternative email that you would prefer me to use, please let me know. Thank you. Credentials, email, and PDF. So, at 1.42 p.m. on February 4th, I emailed the detective and I said, I have received four emails in total. I forwarded all of them to you. Interacting with them is affecting my mental health and I am hoping you may be able to help me email them. I do not feel comfortable contacting or communicating with agency president as she is a person who was potentially a witness and is lying in her email to me. Please let me know, Madison Turner. From the detective, the next day at 7.30 a.m. Hi Madison, sorry I have just re returned to work. I will email them back asking them to stop on your behalf. I suggest you block their emails as they come in. I am sending your interview with me to Toronto Police today, so I expect that you will hear back from them in the coming weeks. I've saved the emails you sent me as well as pictures and attachments. Should Toronto need them, have them email me and I can forward them to their detectives. So that was fun. I don't know about you guys, but...
I don't understand why they would want to talk to me um, besides the reputation. And I honestly believe that them trying to brush this under the rug is incredibly abusive. And not only do I know that it happened to somebody before me, but I have proof and I share that with detectives too. Um, evidence from a person's mouth and a witness. So it only really takes somebody else on that, on that rooftop coming forward. So if you were there and you remember, please report to police in Toronto because it's important and it happened and it affected my entire life and I haven't been able to work the same since. So report what you see to police and stop being a bystander. Fight that freeze and stand up for somebody, anybody. Just be a, pure, be a person that somebody can rely on and not somebody just watching and waiting for it to end. Please. Um, I am not going to insert any names or um, pictures of previous incidents because I don't want to trigger anybody um, or reveal anybody's information. I find people contacting me very private and I wouldn't want to um, jeopardize that on a personal level. I feel like sharing this email is very important for anyone who is reporting a sexual assault or rape case at a workplace. Um, whether it ha is happening to them right now or whether it happened to me seven years ago. The company shouldn't be involved whatsoever until the criminal investigation is concluded, regardless of what I'm doing in my personal life. I understand that what I'm doing right now may be provocative. However, I don't feel like people understand the gratitude like the gravity of the situation and how much it has affected my entire life to the point where I can't work in an office ever again. So one day, um, maybe I'll be able to work again from home and, and be happy. And maybe this is the step towards that because it's helping. But I don't know the answer yet. And um, I'm just trying to figure out what my future is. And explaining how I got to this point is important. And showing you that it did happen. And that people are trying to cover it up and say that it didn't happen. Is directly affecting my mental health and my recovery. Because that's exactly what they did when it happened. They told me that it wasn't real and that it wasn't a big deal and that it didn't happen. So this is important. This process is really important. And thank you for listening. And I love you and support each other. Please. Please. All of you.